Hello all and welcome to Diecast Emporium. In today's video we're going to take a look at the new Diecast Masters Transport Series International HX520 Tandem Tractor with XL120H DG trailer with uh, Caterpillar loads on them. Each of these are configured in a different uh, setup and configuration so we'll go ahead and take a look at each individual one and I'll show you the different configurations that you can get with uh, any of these trucks that you choose to buy. Alright guys, so the first one that we'll take a look at here, this is the full configuration. So you have a Jeep on this one, which is this piece right here, if you're not familiar. You have the long trailer, and then you have a two-axle booster at the end of this truck. So we'll take a look at each individual piece here. All of these sets come with either a two-axle, obviously, which is this, or a uh, one-axle booster. It does swivel like this. And it comes with a pin, although you really don't need the pin, but if you want to lock it in one position, drop the pin right down there. And uh, these just clip onto the end of the trailer. You can see the two knobs. They just click onto the end of your low boy trailer. Uh, the wheels are very nicely detailed, and you'll see those on the rest of the truck as well. The hubs are plastic, but they are very detailed and look great. The oversized load sign, you can take off. It does... Um, come separate so you can put it on the end of the regular trailer or on the end of your boosters depending on which uh, setup that you want to do but overall the booster is a uh, very nice piece all right onward so this particular truck comes with the uh, 349 excavator uh, you can take the excavator off that's very simple to do there is a couple of screws in the middle of that black plate so you can take those off. Also here, they are not extendable, but the outriggers come deployed on the white trailer with the excavator so that it replicates a wide load more accurately. You can see that a little bit. Uh, the other trailers, the black one and the red one, do not come with the outriggers deployed. And like I said, you cannot deploy them because they are molded to the casting. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth at all with the excavator. You've seen a review on this. I've done a review on it. A couple other people have done a review on it. It's a pretty well-known model. Um, but So if you want a closer look at that, just look up that video. As far as the trailer goes, you can flip the extension on the gooseneck right here. This part will flip back depending on how long you wanted to do it. Personally, I have not had an issue with removing the goosenecks from any of these trailers, but a lot of people have complained that this plastic piece is very easy to break off. So just be mindful of that if you want to uh, show the truck without the gooseneck on it. So if you want to load equipment up onto it. It pops out very very much the same way and operates very much the same way as the Norscott Low Boys did back in the day. Um, I, I would say that it's very similar to that. Um, your loading ramps right here, they do go down. They can go down all the way so you can load equipment. But for time's sake, again, we're not going to do that. Onto the Jeep. The white one is the only one, with Caterpillar equipment anyway, that comes with the Jeep. The rest of them will come with your single and two axle booster, but the white one is the only one at this time that comes with a Jeep, at least of the cat sets. Um, it is a combination of die cast metal and plastic. Most of it is modeled in plastic, however, the suspension elements here. I'm sorry, most of it is, mo is modeled in die-cast metal. Some of them are plastic, such as uh, this suspension part here. Uh, the fifth wheel is also a very plastic-feeling piece. But the fifth wheel does slide, so you can slide it forward. You can slide it backwards the entire length so that it will line up with your truck pretty well. Um, a lot of people have messaged me asking, how does the gooseneck, or in this case the... Um, jeep attached to existing trucks that they have it's not a slide and lock mechanism it's more of just a straight drop in on your fifth wheel here you can see as we move towards the truck there's no lock mechanism it just simply does one of these that's it that's all you have to do uh, it does remain grounded there's no um there's no wheels that are too far above the ground that they won't move so as you can see there, for the most part, it's relatively level. It's good enough. Not, It's not perfect, but it's good enough. 
It's way better than the Tonkin Low Boys were back in the day. Um, mud flaps, for the most part, plastic piece, but they look good. I really do like the tires on these trucks and the wheels. I think they turned out great. Um, I know some people have been swapping them out for the chrome ones. And those do look good as well, but really even the white ones look good. It does come standard with a headache rack. This overside load sign you can take off. And on all the trucks you can get, uh, it comes with two different sets of exhaust pipes. So these pipes are uh, the curved pipes, what I like to call the curved pipes. But it also comes with straight pipes, and I have the straight pipes on the black low boy, which you'll see here in just a second. So, depending on your desire, you can put in either straight or um, curved ones. The doors do not open, which to be frank, and for lack of a better word, sucks, but it is what it is. Um, the mirrors, I think, are slightly oversized. I don't think they're completely to scale. That's my opinion. However, the hood does open. So you can see a somewhat detailed engine inside. Which it, What's interesting is I'm not 100% up to speed on what the real engine in these trucks are. With it being international, my assumption would be that it would be Cummins, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's just interesting to me that these are advertised as part of the Caterpillar lineup, so kind of interesting that they wouldn't have a yellow cat engine in there. But uh, I digress. To steering, it's okay. Not the best, but it's alright. It's enough to achieve an angle. And it will go that angle, it will hold it, no problem. So, that is the basic review of the white version and uh, what that truck does. Next one I will bring in here is the black truck. And this one comes with a uh, 963K track loader on it. And as you'll see here, this has the single axle booster. So again... This is not a particularly realistic layout for most states. I don't think you would need a booster for a 963 track loader, but I could be wrong. But I just wanted to show the different possibilities you could do with, you know, either a single or a double axle one. So we'll go ahead and pop that off real quick. Very easy to get off. Just pop out like that. Uh, some of the subtle details you can see on the black one better than you can on the white one. The lights are good. Great detail decaling here. And uh, as I mentioned before, here you can see that the outriggers are molded into the casting. So they're not deployable like they are on the oversized load for the 349. And you can, because I know I'm going to get questions about this even though I already mentioned it. Yes, the loads are removable. Take a Phillips screwdriver and you can easily... Take the load off. Now on to the truck. The only difference here, other than the color of course, is the straight pipes that I have on the exhaust. So you can take a look at what that looks like compared to what the curved one looks like. So there you go. Alright, and the last one we have is with no boosters, no jeeps, just a straight low boy. And uh, this is hauling a 12 M3 grader. Personally, I'm a fan of red. I think that uh, the red one looks the best. Now, there's a couple people that have special edition red ones that were offered for a couple different retailers. That is a different red than this red. This is more of a factory red color that you can get. Um, so if you're wondering why you've seen uh, this truck with a a uh, Jeep on it that's red. That, that's because it's it was a special edition done. It's not part of the mass-produced ones. There is also a silver set that you can get, again, but those both do not come with Caterpillar loads on them. They are, uh, they're just separate ones that are done. So here's a, a final look at the trailer. I think it looks great. I really think it tur these turned out well. They are nowhere near the quality of the WSI or Sword Lowboys. And depending on who you ask, 
my opinion, I don't think they're as good as the first gear ones either. The reason I say that is because the the outriggers for an oversized load are molded into the casting. They don't come off. There's no um, hydraulic lines to plug in like you would get on both of those. Um, and also there's a lot more plastic components. But they are used quite well with metal. So, um, but the trade-off is they're not as expensive either. I mean, they're certainly not as expensive as a WSI low boy. Um, or, which is the old sword low boys. But, it's really, it's really a matter of preference. Are they bad? No. Could they have been a whole lot better? Yeah, I think so. My opinion for this price range, I don't really think there's an excuse for outriggers not being working. I mean, that's... You get a low boy a lot of times to put an excavator on it, and it would have been nice to have an excavator on a low boy that isn't white. But what are you going to do? Um, here is the... I don't think I showed this, but I told you that you can have an extending gooseneck, and it just flips like that. And you can drop the pin in if you want to. Right here, moving this. But again, you don't need to. It locks by itself. You really don't necessarily have to do that. But if you want an extendable gooseneck... You can have it. Paint finish is good. Detail is good. And uh, the, the price point, I think, is, is reasonable for what you get. So, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Which of the, uh, which of the three is your favorite? If you have any questions or um, suggestions or maybe something I didn't think about that you want to know about any of these sets, please let me know in the comment section below. Def I'm not perfect. Never have I claimed to be, so I'm sure I've left out some things. So, please don't uh, be afraid of shooting a question my way or asking me something. Uh, one last thing I do want to show you is the packaging, because the packaging is very, very good on these. This one in particular is for the uh, white one with the excavator. So there you go, Transport Series Diecast Masters International HX520 Tano Tractor with XL120H DG trailer with CAT 349 FL XE hydraulic excavator. This particular item number is 85600. Here's a picture on the side. And you can see it's configured in the way that I had it. Two boosters, two axle booster, and the Jeep here. Uh, pretty standard stuff under here. And on the back... You have some details about both the truck right here and the low boy trailer here and the cat machine here. And the way these are presented is really nice. They just pull out like this. And inside, the model sits in here. And there you can see the other single axle booster sitting right up on top. So packaging definitely, definitely receives a high mark. So once again, guys, 1 to 50 scale by Diecast Masters, the new international low boys. Uh, just a quick synopsis here, and just to reiterate and close this out here. Uh, at the time of this video, the three sets you can get that come with a Caterpillar machine with it are the red version, which comes with a 12 M3 um, greater the black version right here which comes with your 963 track loader and last but not least your white version which comes with a cat 349 uh, excavator all of which 1 to 50 scale all of which very very nicely made so as always guys thank you very much for watching please stay tuned for more videos we've got a couple of awesome things coming up here pretty soon within the next coming days and weeks as always, I appreciate it. Take care. Be safe. We'll see you in the next video.